The year was 1914. George T. and Louis Gerlinger Jr. built their own design truck with a more powerful six-cylinder engine than the typical fours that were available. Hi, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, back with another episode of Toy Talk. In today's episode, we are traveling back in time to the year 1914, when George T. and Louis Gerlinger Jr. built their first truck. The truck employed a powerful six-cylinder engine, and the truck soon became known as the Gear Six, an abbreviation of the brothers plus six for the number of engine cylinders. The Gear Six was introduced to the world in 1915, and the Northwest logging industry was quick to adopt the truck. Edgar K. Worthington and his business partner, Captain Frederick Kent, found the Gear Six truck and thought so much of it that they bought the business. Worthington and Kent's son reincorporated the business as the Kenworth Motor Truck Corporation in 1923. The newly reincorporated business set out to be the premier custom builder of trucks by incorporating customers' requirements in the trucks whenever possible. Moving on to 1933, Kenworth became the first American company to introduce the sleeper cab as an option. Also, Kenworth became the first to make diesel engines standard in their trucks. The USA's Motor Carrier Act of 1935 introduced stringent weight and size restrictions on trucks and trailers. Basically, the act specified the size, length of semi-trucks and trailers, including the maximum weight. To comply with the Motor Carrier Act, Kenworth developed aluminum hubs, cabs, and lightweight four-spring and torsion bar rear suspension, along with a 6x4 option. In 1961, two trend-setting new models were introduced by Kenworth. The W900 Conventional with W4 Worthington and the K100 Cab Over with K for Kent. These two trucks revolutionized the trucking industry again setting new standards for quality, comfort, convenience, reliability, and power. Continuing the tradition of radically improving trucks, in 1984, Kenworth rolled out the T600 in the USA. The new aerodynamic design had a sloped nose and a setback front axle with longer front springs. In addition to fuel economy gains, the Anteater, as it was called in Australia following its 1987 release, had better ride quality and maneuverability than a W model. The Anteater was an extremely polarizing truck. <laughs> Drivers and companies both had strong reactions to the T600. It was either they loved it, or they absolutely hated it. It seemed that mostly drivers hated it, while the companies loved it. Drivers, they liked the classic styling of the W900, but companies liked the fuel savings of the T600. This led to disputes at the time, but not the discontinuation of the T600. That would happen in 2007, some 23 years later. Only, it wasn't really discontinued. It was improved and redesignated as the T-660. 
the D600 has evolved and changed significantly over the past 20 years, undergoing numerous aerodynamic and creature comfort updates. According to Kenworth, today's T600 has a 26% lower drag coefficient as compared to the very first T600. Changes to the T600 included a redesign of the setback front axle and redesigned hood line slope. The combination of the changes improved aerodynamics, fuel efficiency, and maneuverability. All good models of trucks finally drop off the production line for one reason or another. Kenworth T600 ended production in 2007. While the T600 was discontinued, its legacy lives on in the designs of nearly every truck on the road today. Now, let's go on to the rock quarry and talk about a 143rd scale version of the T600. And here we go, guys. This is the IXO Models 1984 Kenworth T600. The first year of the T600, so it's the first model with the W900 grill instead of the T600 grill, which came quickly to these trucks to have their own special grill. Comes in their standard box here that they've got. It has a window box and it has a display case inside with a clear lid and black plastic base. Item number is TR109, Kenworth T600 really really nice piece nice packaging that really shows it off well and there it is out of the box but still in the display case it also has a blister in there which holds the truck in place very well it will keep it from breaking off while it is also screwed down to the base you can also see on the base here it has the ixo logo tampoed on this side by my thumb and then over on this side it has kenworth t600 1984 and TR-109, the item number and description right there. Also on the top of the lid, you can see an IXO logo. Really nice packaging that IXO has. Now when you take it off, lift that lid straight up. And there it is, off the display base and out of the box. It's a 143rd scale die cast model. It has a die cast cab, die cast frame, but there are some plastic parts on it, like most models have plenty of plastic parts. Like the wheels, they are plastic. They didn't chrome plate them, they just painted them silver, which makes them look like aluminum instead of these chrome. They chrome plated the exhaust and the fuel tanks as well as the steps on this guy, but not the wheels. Different. It's got 10 hole um, aluminums, front and rear, with the black little center caps painted on them. Chrome quarter fenders, Chrome deck plate sitting up there. On the back, you can also see it has the airlines tacked on right there in the back of the sleeper. Now, the sleeper box is plastic on this, but the cab is die cast. The fairing up here is also plastic, but then again, look how thin it is. That would be hard to do in metal. So they do that in plastic on pretty much all models. And you can see the bracing up in here. The back of the air horns, if you can peek in there deep enough, there's also two grab bars here and here so you can climb up and hook up your airlines. Now, there is no ladder to get up onto the frame, so you're just going to have to stand there. Chrome deck plate, fifth wheel for the 43rd scale trailers that are not really in abundance outside of New Ray, but they do exist. This guy's got a California 1980s license plate, 1984 plate, California, black mud flaps, they did not tampo the brake lights or the backup lights, but they do have chrome here, so they got the chrome weights at the bottom of the mud flaps. Nice tread pattern on these tires. No steerable axle, but it does have fixed straight front axle, and there's the tie rod spring suspension because it has had longer springs. Then here's the bottom of the transmission and engine detail. You can see the exhaust coming out and going over and up for both sides because this has the dual exhaust. Chrome fuel tanks with black bands, drive shaft, air tanks, air brake canisters there, another drive shaft 
rear suspension, which it looks like it's a torsion bar style suspension with air ride. Really, really nice. On the front side here, we have got quad headlights, the rectangle kind, and then big rectangle driving lights down below. California license plate, and then here is that chrome grill with the Kenworth logo tampoed right there up in the center. This was the W900 grill, they just borrowed it for this. Later, the T600s got their own grill, and it was a little bit different with a big plastic piece down the middle part of the hood and the grill was behind it. This guy has a bug visor up on top of the hood, which is common of the 80s, but it wasn't really common of aero style trucks, but it's a big bug deflector. They worked pretty well. And generally they were clear and so solid, that way you could see through them. You can see up here at the windshield, it has photo etched windshield wipers. But they're great big ones. They're not likely to flick off this time, like the 64 scale kind do. Hard ABS plastic windows with black gaskets tampoed around and the center bar tampoed. It's got a visor, air horns up on top, and roof uh, clearance lights. Those are individual pieces that were chrome plated, and then they tamped with a little bit of orange paint on the front, so it has lenses. The rectangle style air horns with the caps over them. That was a cool 80s thing. The mirrors... These here are these kind of mirrors. They changed those later to a single post mirror on the T600s, but the first ones had traditional West Coast style mirrors and they were painted red with black arms. Really, really nice. You can see the chrome exhaust. Dual exhaust looks cool on these, but most of them had single exhaust. It's got the mid roof sleeper that's not integrated, but it's a really nice sleeper. And then the fairings. There's a door and a little vent door toolbox door door handle there is tampoed and then there is your air intake really cool i like what they did with this truck kenworth logo is tampoed there and then some marker lights there turn signal light is also individual jewel style and in orange so it looks like it's an amber turn signal great truck 143rd scale uh it would be perfect to put with a new ray 43rd scale trailer so that you could have a really really nice truck and trailer set but this only comes with a cab and that is the ixo models 1984 kenworth t600 the very first of the anteaters the truck that changed the entire industry kenworth's history of turning the trucking world upside down goes back to its founding with the first six cylinder truck followed by the first sleeper cab and standard diesel engines. For its entire life, Kenworth has worked to make trucking easier and more economical for the owner and more convenient and comfortable for the driver. Kenworth did it again in 1984 when the T600 was released. Thanks to the T600, aerodynamics became the new frontier for the trucking industry, making the T600 one of the most influential trucks of all time. You can see the results today in pretty much every truck on the road. From Kenworth to Volvo, aero-style trucks reign supreme and the old classic designs relegated to a few ultra-premium owner-operator trucks. While limited supplies last, get one of the IXO models Kenworth T600s that I reviewed today. When they are sold out, the link will disappear. But I still have other goodies for you. Like the link to grab my report on scale to keep your collection in scale. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you would take time to leave a tip here or sponsor me over on my Patreon page. These videos take quite a lot of time and your support will go a long way to help keep this channel going for you. Thanks for watching everyone. Please go on and smash the like button, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with some new content 
and another episode of Toy Talk.